trigger you guys again just to show you restaurant electrical rooms are always fun packed full of crap because the ways they see it is, is it's just a storage room to put all their stuff look at this stuff These things are a mess look at Whew. fun stuff this video is brought to you by sporlin quality integrity and tradition Today we have a call on a walk-in cooler that is not working and it's iced up, you can tell, totally inside. We've got a high alarm or high temp alarm on the Ketotherm 10 Plus defrost controller. And over here, we also are iced up. The reason why we're iced up is because this door was busted. Now they had someone do a temporary repair, but it's still not shutting right, but it's better than nothing because apparently the door had been sitting down and they've been running without a door for the last couple days. They just called me and made me aware of it. Had they called me in the beginning, I probably could have made a temporary repair to the door. They've since had like a welder do some stuff to the door, so there's no really repairing it anymore. I'll uh, make the recommendations about uh, replacing the door because it's beat to crap. Um, but for now, we're going to get this guy defrosted. You can see my coils with the thermal imager. They're just like totally iced up how cold they are even if you look inside looking into ice so while I'm uh, setting up my hoses and everything I went ahead and put the controller into defrost you can do it by holding the back and the inner button down for like 10 seconds and it manually goes into defrost so I did that and then I'm just getting the hose and everything ready. Trigger you guys again, just to show you, restaurant electrical rooms are always fun. Packed full of crap. Because the way they see it is, is it's just a storage room to put all their stuff. Look at this stuff. These things are a mess. Look at, whew, fun stuff. All right, well, I gotta find a breaker. Good luck, wait, 15 maybe? Walk-in fans. Let's hope that shuts it off. Fun stuff though, look at that. Nice. I don't use this thing all the time. I've talked about it a few times, but on something like this, super nice because, you know, you got all the nut drivers you need on it. I don't carry this in my tool bag though, because it's too heavy for that. But when I'm de-icing walk-ins and stuff, it is nice just to have everything you need. I'll usually use a ratchet wrench too, but just a, uh, you know, nice little tool. These things are iced up to the point that like I can't get the motors out. So you, I hate doing this, but you just gotta go slow and hope that the motors don't get internally wet to where they're gonna short out. We'll set them down and let them kind of drip dry. Um, but yeah, you just gotta carefully defrost it because the ice is so thick back in there that you can't, you know, you can't push them out basically. I got the coils defrosted and I got them uh, turned back on. It's pretty warm in this box right now. Um, I'm gonna clean up my water hose and then we'll uh, get up on the roof and check out the condensing unit. Okay, today we have got Field Piece Job Link probes on coil one, Field Piece Job Link temp clamp, and then we have Sporlin Smart Pro R. These are the long range Sporlin probes on coil two. Um, I like things about both of them. I'm just kind of curious what the range is compared because they both are pretty much the ultimate range. All right, so according to Measure Quick, I have about two bars of signal on my low pressure for the field piece job link probe and the return air probe, two to three bars as far as the signal range goes. And then we can go to uh, the Smart Pro R tools and it's identical. Actually, this one's uh, saying three bars and not ranging, but I mean, I'd call them almost the same. Yeah, we're ranging two to three bars, two to three bars. So it's, it's almost identical range between the two probes. Um, I got nothing bad to say about either of them. I love them both actually. So just a nice little comparison right here. All right, I'm up on the roof. Um, everything's looking good. We've got a clear sight glass. I really don't care for those Sahua. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Sanhua, whatever. But anyways, this way it came on a heat craft unit. Um, but we got a clear sight glass. The box temp is going to take a while. Um, let's see if I can get box temp here. 
Uh, 54 degrees in the box right now, so it's going to be a while before it comes down to 10. So I'm just going to watch it for a bit, monitor the two coils. I have uh, the field piece probes on coil one and then measure quick probes on coil two. So we can actually uh, monitor the superheat of both coils. So things are looking really good. Um, I mean, I don't see any problems. It's gonna take a long time for it to come down to temperature. So uh, yeah, my box temp right now is, it's almost 90 degrees outside. My box temp is 45 degrees. Uh, it's take, it's gonna take a while, you know, to bring that box down to temp, but everything is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So we're gonna tell them to keep an eye on it and then I'm gonna quote those door repairs. It's definitely cooling down in the box. Uh, one good thing is is the return air temp is accurate to the thermostat too, so that's good. Uh, one thing I am going to do though is I am going to add more defrost to this because the door is messed up and we need to do some repairs on it. So we're going to add some defrost. I'm going to set that up. Defrost per day, six. We're going to bump that up to eight. And then... Uh, defrost time it's about 18 minutes I'll leave it there uh, let's see what my box temp is set for 38 that's probably fine I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel the differentials too so we're gonna maintain 40 degrees in the box I'd actually like to see that come down a little bit that to oops, 37 okay we're gonna leave it be I'm gonna tell the customer to keep an eye on it and then uh, I'm gonna have to get that door repaired for him so they had supposedly last week it was broken the door had been off for several days they were like propping it up or something and then they had a welder come in and weld that pin right there, but the pin's in there crooked. But I really don't want to take the door apart because it's functioning at the moment. And I'm afraid if I take it apart, it's going to fall apart. So I'm going to find out, I can get that saddle bracket, a new saddle bracket, a new upper mechanism with all the parts, and then a new bottom pin um, and a new bushing down in the bottom. I've done these doors a bunch. But I'm going to find out how much that is. Normally the customer would just replace the whole door assembly with a bolt-on. But with this whole virus going on, you know, they're not trying to spend a shit ton of money. So we'll see. I'll give them a quote and see where they want to go. But um, we'll definitely need to turn down the defrosts when, uh, when we're done though. Because this is eight defrosts is way too many for this unit. So I think a very under-promoted thing is the rolling carts. This thing is like awesome. I love using these things. I never used one for the first... I probably only used it for the last two, three years. And I don't know why I didn't use it for the first 15 years. Um, awesome. I mean, you just put all your stuff on there, nice and neat and organized. All right, so my coil's doing really good. You can see how it looks different when it's not all iced up. Supply air is good. Let's go to the other side. Look at the temp control of all things. Look at how hot that thing's getting. Interesting. Come on over here. The other coil, you can see the liquid line there in the back. Fan motors. But yeah, we're doing good. We're gonna wrap this one up. Um, last and least, you can see the infiltration around that door. There's really not a whole lot of insulating value to the door. Oh, that's funny. You can see my reflection off the stainless. Huh, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you can just see the, the heat coming in. Now, even when that door is shut all the way, look at the heat infiltration from the top where it's not sealing. It's definitely a problem. Definitely a problem. When you have a walk-in cooler and 
you know, the door gets open multiple times a day, you have infiltration, you have warm air coming in from outside of the box, okay? The system is usually designed for that much traffic coming into the box. We usually set them up, we, you know, kind of figure out a, an estimate of how many times people are going to come in and out of the box, how many lights are in the box, how many heat sources are in the box, and you do a load calculation and you design your equipment. Okay, when you have a door that doesn't shut properly, or in this instance, a door that is non-existent, because the customer told me that they went almost a week with the door literally just being set next to the walk-in, and then at nighttime they would prop it up there, okay? This is what happens, because the run times, basically, the evaporator's got all that warm air infiltrating through the door frame, right? And it's going directly to the coil, and the coil starts to freeze up, and it builds up and builds up and builds up. So this was pretty intense. Um, it was interesting. You know, you can't help but be a little bit frustrated, but at the same time, eh, what can you do? I mean, this stuff kind of happens. It, Like I told the customer, I said, if you'd have called me when the door broke, because that's what I do. I fix the walk-in doors, like, you know, whatever. The, with the virus going on, you know, people are getting kind of silly and they're kind of afraid and I get it. You know, everybody's trying to save a dime and you know, it is what it is, but I guess I should just be thankful that they're calling me to make the repairs. Right. You know? Okay. So, um, since this video has aired, uh, we've already sent a technician out there. We've done a repair on the door. Um, we just put new saddle brackets on it and stuff like I talked about. So the door is now shutting properly. We adjusted the defrost time, you know, reduced it back down. Um, it's been, uh, this video was all the way back in May, I believe. And it's been just sitting in my footage. Um, this, what well, we're in July now, we're like the middle of July, July 18th or something like that. So, um, it's been working fine. Customers been happy. Everything's cool. So I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Do me a favor. If you guys are considering any tools, purchasing any tools, check out truetechtools.com. There's a link down in the show notes of the video. I have an offer code there, big picture, one word. It'll save you 8% on your order. I get a small commission if you guys choose to go through them, but Hey, don't just go there and buy tools because I told you to do your research, make sure that they're the best price. I can vouch for their customer service. Uh, they have a very good uh, variety of tools. They have very fast shipping, but do your due diligence. Again, don't just trust some idiot on YouTube, okay? Um, check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. If you're interested in purchasing any merch, hats, shirts, all that good stuff, you guys can find it on there. Um, yeah, that's it. Live streams Monday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific time. So long as I can get off work, I usually discuss all these different videos. I really, really appreciate you guys. The support you guys have given me, the emails, the text messages, um, uh, the, the communication in the Discord server, which if you guys don't already know, there's a link in the show notes. Uh, I communicate with people in Discord too. Um, it's awesome, guys. I, I'm just baffled and very humbled by all of this. So thank you so very much. We will catch you guys on the next one.